The Great Search brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Every single week, Lady Ada shows you using her powers of engineering to help you, yes, you find things on digikey.com. Thank you so much, DigiKey, for making this segment possible. Lady Ada, what's on the Great Search this week? Okay, so we were talking about earlier um, in the show the driver that I wrote for the VCNL 4020, which is a proximity and ambient light sensor with a um, you can actually see here, like, let's really zoom in. There's an IR emitter here. This is like a little IR, ooh, thank you, IR emitter. And then this is a reflectance detector. And so this chip has a pulse of infrared light that goes out, hits something, bounces back, and then the amount of light that is reflected back is measured by this chip, and you can read it over I squared C. Um, maybe you go to the overhead, this, this might. You can see I have a little demo code running here that pulses. That's it doing a measurement. So every time you see that pulse, it's a measurement from that um, IR LED. I guess you go back to the computer. I just thought it would be fun to share that off. Um, and these are really great for doing distance measurement. And it kind of reminded me that, um, you know, one of the first sensors that I ever used as like a, uh, youngling engineer was one of these sharp gp2y oh a21 syk0f um this is like a classic early i think it's like a late 80s design sensor very simple um you i don't even know if, i mean it has a chip in it somewhere i guess but um you know it's very it's clearly quite old and um what this does is it has an emitter led i think this one maybe this one um, and it sends out again infrared through this five millimeter led and then the light bounces back and then you get an analog voltage output so power red three to five volts ground or maybe it's just five volts ground black and then the analog signal back is white and this was like a very popular sensor it's 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 pretty expensive and it's not as used as often but in the beginning, when you didn't even have a microcontroller, like you could hook this up to a comparator. And so when the analog voltage went above or below a certain value, you could detect, oh, somebody is within this distance, or you could change the brightness by having the analog voltage feed into some other, you know, like current amplifier, whatever. Um, so these these were very, very popular. And um, you know, the, the VCNL 4020 is kind of the next generation of that. I wanted to find a chip that could be a replacement for this. One of the nice things about um, this particular chip is it can go up to 80 centimeters. So it's like, you know, almost a meter. You might be waiting, saying like, oh, you know, why don't I just use Temaflight chips? And you can use Temaflight chips. We have um, various TOF. Uh, I will say this is not, by the way, this is not Temaflight. Uh, one thing you can, the reason you can tell it's not Temaflight is whenever you see these two lenses, it's usually infrared, not Temaflight. But the VL53 and VL61 family are true time of flight, but they're they're also a little bit more expensive. Um, they're about you know 15 bucks for a breakout board from us. The chip itself is like you know three four dollars, which is not a lot, but it is more than an infrared sensor. Infrared sensors are going to be like on the order of a dollar. If that two bucks is important for your build materials and you don't need the precision, you might be happy with an infrared sensor. So let's go to DigiKey. Um, and then here is one thing you should not do. I was like, oh, I want a distance sensor. I'm going to type in distance sensor. And what's interesting is that there's there's two kinds of sensors. There's distance sensors and there's proximity sensors. And they're classified differently. Of course, these are the you know expensive automation ones. But let's look at the, uh, well, 6,000, the less expensive ones. Actually, let's look at the, let's look at the normally stocking ones so we don't look at the ones that are unavailable. So these are the time of flights, the v, you know, VL 53s and 61s. These sensors, and even the TMF 88s, these sensors actually will give you, I believe, like actual true distance. They'll tell you like millimeter and centimeter, at least the, the VL series will. The TMF, I don't know, I think this is also um, time of flight, even though it has a lens there. I think that's just a lens for the the laser, but then you've got this like that GP2Y, right? That familiar um, family appears here under distance. So 
there's proximity and there's distance. Technically, the distance sensor category should just be sensors that give you like literal distance, like ultrasonic or time of flight or like calibrated infrared. But um, it is kind of gets mixed up a little bit um, with the category because it also has the, the category is old enough that it probably started with this GP to Y series chips I showed you the analog output um, and then start getting like the digital sensors mixed in with it. But what we really want is a proximity sensor, which is going to be less expensive because it's not going to give you, it doesn't give you like true millimeter output. It's going to just tell you like, is something closer or farther, near or far as it were. Uh, so let's look at, I think it's under, we don't want industrial, we're just going to go for simple. So proximity sensor. And let's go for active and uh, we'll do infrared ambient light and um, actually let me go to the proximity sensor section okay so these have again it's like they're kind of mixed together there is the inductive um, sensors and there's also um, you know, piezo electric style, or like there's this infrared proximity that's like panel mounted, PIR sensors. So everything kind of got mixed in together. Um, I'm trying to remember what I did. So I actually looked for the 4020 because I was like, okay, the 4020 is good, but I want it to be a larger distance. And it turned out that this was actually an ambient light or IR sensors, which is tough. So if you're looking for these sensors, they might be split up across three different categories. You might have to look in distance sensors where you saw that analog sharp distance sensor proximity sensors which are seems to be more true to like either on or off either it's there or not and then ambient light or ir sensors the reason probably these sensors are are in this category the infrared smt ones is because they tend to not only do proximity sensor but they also do ambient light sensing or like ir like in general how much ir light is in the area so let's go for active with proximity detection. And then I want I squared C output. SPI is fine too. And let's see what's available. Um, so there's a couple of options here. So this one, for example, is ambient IR. Oh, I want surface mount. Hold on, I get surface mount only. Okay. And then I'll do normally stocking. Some of these here are not, it, there's a mix. So the Vemel 77, I happen to know this chip, it doesn't do proximity, it just does optical. Um, but it is I squared C. So I'm not I'm not actually sure like why it ended up coming in to proximity detection. I think it I think it can do basic like infrared detection, but it doesn't have an emitter. You want chips like this like this is an a the APDS 9930 this actually has a couple of things there's ambient I think there's an RGB and it has proximity and the 9960 also does some basic gesture recognition and you'll see that the prices are less expensive so you can get these for about a dollar a lot less than you um, have to spend for the time of flight sensors which are easily like three four bucks a piece because you have this like laser there inside so a lot of the VCNLs and APDS, um, Scilabs has a couple chips, but they're a little bit more expensive. You know, to, to get more detailed into like which which one of this family, you go to the Vichet website, which will have, you can search in more specifics for like, you know, the, the length that you use to search it. One fun tip is the wider apart the LED and the detector, usually the farther the distance. So I checked out, I just actually kind of like looked at a couple of these and these are like, okay, the sensor and detector, uh, the emitter and detector are very close together. But I went to this one, the 4200. And what I like about this is first off, there's a lot of it in stock, 50,000 pieces. It's inexpensive, it's a dollar. And it can do up to 1.5 meters, which is kind of nice. Um, and you can change, you know, you can do settings and stuff. And it's very simple. It's just power ground, uh, interrupt, and then data and clock. So, you know, 
good for and amazingly up to 800 milliamps pulse current that's the trade-off if you're doing the high the wide distance sorry the, the large distance sensing the ir led has to be very powerful in order to reach and bounce off of something about a meter meter and a half away so this does use a, a very short pulse but a very strong pulse of current so you'll need to make sure that you have a huge ass capacitor on the board where you're using the sensor uh, because your power supply can't necessarily su supply 800 milliamps but you know maybe for that you know microsecond or less than it is if your capacitor is like 100 or 200 microfarads you may be able to buffer that current um to get the data out and back so this is a very interesting chip i think this is again inexpensive will do the job for basic distance proximity measurements um it has a very similar uh design style oh interesting you have to have an external transistor for it uh, a very similar um interface for writing you know uh, for getting the data as the vcnl 4020 which is really nice and it will get you like the output in 16-bit light level um white led light and proximity sensing detection and then you can do threshold detection as well and the drivers are while it's a non-trivial chip you know there's a lot of registers it's definitely going to be easier than trying to write registers for the time of flight sensors because all those um uh vc 53 um sorry not the uh what's it called I forgot the uh vl the vl 53 series the drivers you can't you can't really write them from scratch um they are like very complicated and they have like, a big state machine inside of them because there's like a little chip running the whole thing it's not um like a solid state solution so if you're trying to like write a driver from scratch from a new platform because you can't get the time of flight sensor um software for your platform or whatever it's doesn't it's not ported over it might be faster to go with an infrared sensor so this is my pick the vcl 4200 lots in stock how's your church 